It's been a very long road, and here we are at the end of it. We are the After Buzz TV Voltron Legendary Defender After Show, and this is our series retrospective. We are we're going to talk about character arcs. We're going to talk about stories. We're going to talk with some very special guests, and we are, as always, going to have a wonderful time tonight because within the next two hours, we are finishing this up, and then the Tavern of Lions will be closing its doors for good. So thank you for joining us for this incredible episode and for this incredible ride. And for the very last time, team, it's time to form Voltron. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> We're all crying. Everyone's crying. It's fine. Everything's fine. Hi. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday, everybody, yeah. Welcome to the end of the universe. There's a restaurant here. Ooh. Um, Yeah, this is what you're in for for the next two hours. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are the After Buzz TV Voltron Legendary Defender After Show. This is the series retrospective. This is everything. This is it. We are going to talk about it all in summary, for the most part. And we're going to have a grand old time. I have with me tonight Green Lion Megan Salinas. Hey, everybody. Rejoining us this evening, Red Lion Emma Fife. Hi. It's, uh, it's nice to be back for is. just this one, you know, very special sort of series retrospective. Thanks for having me. It is so good to have you back for the rap party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am Black Lion Katie Cullen. And we have our two wonderful special guests joining us again this week for the last time. We have our showrunners, Joaquim Dos Santos and Lauren Montgomery. Yay! Yay. Yay. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Welcome back, you lovely human beings, and thank you for giving us this show. Oh, oh well, please. Thanks for being fans of it. You know, I think we probably said it eight billion times, but we loved making the show. Yep. We loved uh, how passionate so many of our fans were about the show, and it was just like a labor of love and us trying to make something that really spawned from like our nostalgia and all of the things that influenced us over the years. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. It was, it, you know, we loved this property going back to a time where our brains weren't able to really process what story was. We just knew we like that and that <laughs> stayed with us. Yeah. It was interesting today on um, Twitter, somebody had tweeted something that was basically a poll of what were the first five anime series you can remember watching. Right. And for me, Voltron was definitely one of them. And it's one of those things where, again, I, I was too young to really process what was happening, but I just went, this is cool, I like this thing. Yeah, yeah it, it came out at a time where you didn't even know what anime was. Oh, yeah. And so you're just, was... like, you're just like, this is cool, it's unique, there are robots, there's yeah. an awesome girl pilot. Yeah. And yeah, it was a it was a good, for its, for its time, it was a fantastic adventure, it, and I feel like you guys updated that feeling very well. Oh, yeah. thanks. It definitely was. Right. This was yeah. just a wonderful day. <laughs> Before we get started, we have house rules. Announcements. We always have house rules. Um, yeah, the spoiler warning is, of course, down because we are talking about literally yeah. everything. If you would like to be a part of this conversation, if you're watching live, hello, welcome to the live chat. There is also our hashtag, ABTV Voltron. And, um, yeah, this is going to be a big one, I think. As always, the third, final, and most important house rule is be nice or get out. And you say that we're joking, but um, those of you who were in live chat before stream were there when we disabled it as a test. <laughs> and I've banned three people already tonight. So, we're not wow. kidding. Be nice, or you're gone. I do have to ask, Josh, where are you getting these sound effects? <laughs> what sound, sound effects are great. On? Oh, they're wonderful. Plethora of so many things. <laughs> we appreciate your plethora. Josh is our Koran tonight. And has Yay. been for this entire season, and uh -huh. he is absolutely wonderful, and we love him. But yeah, everyone has opinions. Please feel free to express your opinions. Yeah. Please express your opinions in a respectful manner. Respectful to your fellow people in chat, respectful to your host, respectful to our guests. And if you fail to be respectful, you're done. And, and here's the thing, guys. It's perfectly okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree with all of us. We don't speak for the entire fan base. This I was, is all just I was only say, our I don't opinions. even think that we all have the exact same no, opinions. No, no, goodness, no. But you <laughs> so, embrace those differences. A hundred percent, yeah. That's what makes this show fun. If we yeah. all sat down and said, well, I like this thing. Well, me too. Well, me three. Well, me four. Now let's fill another 45 minutes. <laughs> yep. That's not how this works. No, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that is the rules, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And before we get going, 
Aww. I would like oh, a Toast yeah. of Voltron. I have not actually had one of these For before. Those, so. This is the first time we've had the uh, Sendak on ice on air, and it's going to be the last time I make one of these, because it turns out that one of the main ingredients has been out of production since 2016. Oh, so, wow. Love you guys. So Come by. Yeah. Come to Voltron. Come to Voltron. Tastes like uh, it tastes like a Jones soda or something yeah. like a fancy soda that comes in a glass bottle. Good I like job. them sweet. <laughs> Straight quintessence shot, right to the heart. All right, let's get rolling. Okay. Let's pick up where we left off from last week, actually, because there was a big part of the uh, last episode of season eight that we didn't have the time to touch on, and that's the epilogues. Mm. Yeah. Now I actually want to open the floor to you guys because I my understanding is there's a story behind them. And we'd love to hear it. Yeah, there is. Um, so, you know, when we originally conceived of the epilogues, uh, you know, the conceit was that we were going to sort of do these goofy kind of throwaway things that were like, I don't know, catching up with characters that we didn't. Oh, you yeah. Know, so we had one that I think was. Like was, characters we met in the space mall. Yeah, just characters <laughs> we met in the space mall and what they ended up doing. Yeah. <laughs> We had like what's Kaltenecker up there? We had Zethrid, I think, teaching like a CrossFit yeah. class. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, and it was cute and it was fun. Um, and you know, by the time we were sort of crafting that portion, it's right when we were sort of re on the receiving end of the fallout from season seven, mm. uh, specifically the Adam and Shiro stuff. Sure. Uh, which. We totally understood, um, mm. and there's a, there's sort of a you know a big story that surrounds all that. So we made a decision to sort of uh, recraft the epilogues to one, I think, include Shiro's beat. But as a result, all the other characters, you know, it would have felt I don't know, if it would have felt a little weird if we had just yeah. done like, <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, just and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> Shiro's wedding, and then Shiro's wedding. <laughs> yeah. um, which everyone else was at too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we definitely, uh, they were sort of, Shiro specifically was crafted around the idea that we were attempting to reach out to the fan base that was affected negatively sure. by, Absolutely. you know, the storyline uh, uh, between Adam and Shiro. Um, so, you know, I think even as we were doing it, like Lauren and I were looking at each other and we were like, some people are going to hate this. Yeah. Some people are going to view this as like a giant Band-Aid. Some people are going to view this as like pandering. We knew it. We sort of ran it up the chain uh, at, at, at DreamWorks. And, uh, you know, there's, again, we'll get into the backstory yeah. of all the, the Adam and Shiro stuff. But thankfully, they were, they were open to allowing us to do it because it really was our way of trying to canonically confirm on screen. Yeah. The sort of vagaries around Shiro's sure. orientation. I think mm -hmm. that I I just sort of want to address that right off the yeah. bat. Just just from the point of view is like for me as a viewer watching that scene, I I did not feel like that scene was pandering. I understand why people might feel that way right. and might feel like it was a big giant band aid. But at the same time, a lot of the complaints that people had was, well, they didn't even have any conversations together. And I'm like, this is supposed to be a couple years later, you guys. It wasn't, this isn't like yeah. the day after. But I honestly think ideally, <laughs> had, had, had the story been available to us, sure. had, had, had the studio at the time been open to us exploring that, we don't like to just jam characters no. together. Oh, ab no, absolutely. Our, our I... ideal situation would have been to build that relationship. Oh, sure, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, yeah, but I, I, but, I, yeah. I, I feel like I, I understand the mixed feelings about it, but ultimately, I'm appreciative of, like you said, the message of okay, well, we feel like people felt like they weren't a hundred percent sure that Adam and Shiro were definitely a couple. So, like, let's let's like really address the fact that that Shiro, yeah. is, who is your like super manly hero yeah. mm -hmm. is a gay man and, yeah. and and the importance of that shouldn't be belittled by any stretch of the imagination it shouldn't but i, I you know again it's it's sort of like we we, we can s see this thing from like a multifaceted yeah. view so like as an outsider i've 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 looked at shows and immediately sort of written it off as like oh here we go again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i i i think we totally get it i think we were hoping that people would be able to kind of read between the lines and there were certain people that could and i think we have a relationship with you guys. Yeah, you know, we talk I know. and hang out. So you guys sort of understand where we stand on sure. the issues. Um, so I think that that plays into it and you know, obviously sure. appreciate your understanding on yeah. it at all. Well I yeah, as you say, I, I I can't look 
at this show without my own biases right. of knowing you guys right. and having had conversations with you about like the process of making this show. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, but I think you know if if you'll allow us yeah, to just go course. back to sort of like the the the, the story point between Adam and Shiro, you know, and this isn't. I think it's more emblematic of kind of the state of the industry mm. uh, overall, um, and and our specific little nook of animation, which was we were right in this like middle area, and and that goes for us as showrunners and for the show yeah. in general. So. We weren't creator owned. We weren't creator driven. I mean, we were creator driven in the fact that they allowed us to tell a, a deep story the way we wanted to. But we don't. We didn't create Voltron. No. You know what I mean? For all yeah. intents and purposes, this is like us taking over something like Transformers. Sure. Or, you know. Oh, a hundred percent. So there was only so much leeway that we had with the stories that we could tell. And honestly, when the Adam and Shiro storyline was sort of being played out, and we were sort of meeting some resistance. You know, Lauren and I kind of looked at each other for a moment and said, like, how are we going to handle this? Is this something we, like, bail on? Or, yeah. like, what do, what do we do here? Like, do we just, like, up and leave? Or, you know, that really wasn't an option for us. Of course not. And, yeah. But also, you know, because well, yeah, we had a crew. It's not, it's not just, like, I can't afford my mortgage. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, you know, yeah. We, we have a crew that we care about. We brought onto this show. If... We abandon them. We we don't know what's in store for them. Right. We sure. don't know. Do they get to stay on? Do, get, do right. they get to keep their jobs? A exactly. Does someone else come on and then right. they're working under someone else that they didn't sign up mm -hmm. for? Or they're working um, on someone else that's just going to like, all right, we're just going to finish the show and not really do right by the rest of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like, I and think the, we, regardless of what we could do specifically within the show, we knew that at least we could send like the larger thematic message yeah. Right. Yeah. through yeah. the show. And so that kind of became our focus. Sure. Right. So to get into the weeds of it just a little <laughs> bit, our original conception, like our, our original idea for Adam and Shiro, it's it's similar to what you guys saw play out on screen. There were differences. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they both shared an apartment. The scene that you saw didn't take place in like the officer's lounge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam was not a member of the Galaxy Garrison. He was a dude that just had a job that looked like a, a working professional. Um, and they had conversation that clearly displayed that they loved each other mm. and that the relationship was just sort of coming to an end because Shiro was choosing, you know, the garrison over their relationship. Uh, you know, as we sort of got through the process of, of, of premise script, it went all the way down the line. It got storyboarded. Wow. And then at some point, you know, we received pushback from the studio and, and, you know, we were sort of like a little confused, like, hey, how did it go down, like so far down the line be be before we received pushback? And, you know, it. Uh, this is not like a like a, a vilifying of, of no. DreamWorks or anything. Like no. every exec that we ever interacted with was, was like, hey, we understand why you want to tell the story. We understand where you're coming from. It's a little bit bigger than that. You know, there's there's other sort of controlling mm. parties with Voltron, which makes it unique. It's yeah. not just a, a, a DreamWorks own property. Yeah. And it just, I think it got logistically really, really weird. Well, and, and like you were saying, it, it, it's not something that, it, it isn't something that you created. So it is. The, so there, there were certain limitations in terms of, as you say, like what, how far you could go with stuff you wanted to do with the story, I, th yes, I think. Yes, but I mean, there is also a, you know, a weird sort of hypocrisy with that. Like, we're yeah. able to show thousands of characters, <laughs> if, you know, basically dying yeah, on screen. Yeah, there's a lot of people that die in the yeah. show. Yes. That Lotor was, Just, was working with being on fire. Yeah. yeah. So two people who love each other. It's an know? inherent hypocrisy. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's, it's I agree. one that's frustrating for us as creators. Sure, of course. But I think, you know, when we sort of got, you know, we, we sort of revised the script, we sort of revised, you know, we, we tried different avenues mm -hmm. and it was clear that it was, it was something that wasn't available to us. Yeah. It was a storyline. So we revised it. Sure. So we made the revision. We basically, we essentially made them like Goose and Maverick for all intents and purposes. <laughs> it was like they were, you know, we revised the setting. Yeah. We revised that what the nature of their relationship uh, and as we sort of like moved on down the process, you know, we got to the point where Earth's invasion was happening and we were like, we've seen Voltron cut through like every Galra cruiser. We've seen the Galra basically reduced to kind yeah. of like 
not a joke at that point, sure. but like we were looking for ways to make them intimidating. We were looking for ways to like mm. make Earth's loss feel heavier. Yeah, you want them to stop being stormtroopers. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, we decided to put Adam on the front lines to make you know Sonda's decision that much her hubris and all that yeah. mess uh, you know all the more sort of real and and you know so at that point it was like essentially we were like okay it's like tom cruise crying over anthony edwards in in top gun sorry anybody that's not 40 <laughs> uh, you don't understand that reference um, they, they were flight partners gun. i understand that reference. <laughs> they were flight partners they were flight partners anthony edwards yes. died in a what, what was it f14 f- 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 tom yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm sure the reboot will be out in a couple yeah. years oh, exactly. it's oh, yeah. they they had better have that's volleyball. for sure <laughs> they had better have volleyball Most i tell certainly. you why that's right yeah anyway um, but we got into even weird situations where it was like you know i had like a tracer statue like prominently placed on my desk and like we were like Hey, this awesome show Overwatch with which we share a bunch of fans yeah. like is, mm-hmm. has Tracer as their and like like lead character. character. Yeah, yeah. And she's awesome. The poster uh, girl for the game of the year is a lesbian. Uh, and That's I, right. And I was gonna say, I think too, probably for you guys, and I, I mean, I I may be making assumptions that are completely incorrect here, mm-hmm. but I, I think there was a level of. You know, so many people were aware of your involvement with shows like Legend of Korra right. that had an ending wherein two women ended up in a relationship with one another. Right. Which, again, actually, when you when you look at Korra, is vague-ish. It's vague. <laughs> but I will say it's paid off because their relationship built naturally throughout yes. the body of the show. That's very true. And that's true. what's important. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. Think, I think that is what's important. We were obviously approaching Shiro's orientation from through flashbacks yeah. we were trying to show that he was in a just a mature relationship yeah mm-hmm. um and, so and, it was different and i think that you mm-hmm. know that i've i've had some conversations and i actually wrote an article about it for fandom one time where i was discussing the fact that in this was pre uh the final season coming out and i basically was saying you know i understand people's frustration with the whole shiro scenario however just because the person who he was in a relationship with got killed off, like, doesn't mean that he's no longer gay. And I, but I, right. and, uh, being completely understanding of people bemoaning the trope of barrier yeah. gays, right. yeah. which definitely does exist. And I'm not saying that it doesn't, 100%. and it's in that it's not a problem. But it is important to note that, again, you have this character who is very much your sort of quintessential like alpha male that that was the trope that we were trying to like sort of step on was, yeah. was that you know i grew up with characters like duke to a much lesser degree he's a big giant robot but optimus prime yeah. the idea of optimus <laughs> prime being with another optimus prime was off the table yeah. like it was that's because he's no with go- megatron exactly <laughs> Obviously, exes, and that's why the war. Right. <laughs> um, but the barrier gaze thing, it sounds, like, yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it was either going to be barrier gaze or no gaze. Well, okay, and so, that's a rough choice. So here's where we arrived at this. And, mm-hmm. and again, you know, we were pointing to things like Overwatch. We were pointing to Steven Universe and saying, like, guys. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, there are different scenarios. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were in a slightly different position. We didn't have, you know, that position of being the yeah. creators of this IP. And we also weren't a video game that was directly marketed to like teens and above. We were, mm. for all intents and purposes, like started as a show for boys like six to 11 to sell as many sell toys, toys as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just like a fact and that's business. And it, and it, it, it sort of and is what it is. Yeah, I think another unfortunate factor was just the fact that animation is so far ahead of the the schedule as far mm-hmm. as its release is that, you know, sometimes really important decisions are being made before people even realize what the core audience Sh- ends oh, up yeah. being. Mm-hmm. And, and you mm-hmm. kind of have to, it's a, it's a little bit like gambling, kind of got to put all your bets right. on you this one area and hope that that plays well, out. Because it's before you can, because you've got the majority of your content written before you can even really gauge an audience reaction at all, yeah. as you say, let alone like determine your core audience. Well, yeah, animation mean, is a multiple year pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't get that. But even yeah. specifically with season seven and eight, we basically held on to season seven. So season eight was like 
done by the time season seven was dropping. We had like a month left yeah. mm -hmm. when reaction for season seven started coming in, and that was that was day of the drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we were we were in a weird position. So, to mm -hmm. DreamWorks's credit, um, I think the tide started changing internally. Yeah. They came for back sure. to us and said, "Okay, hey, we're open to explore." Um, you know, this relationship between Adam and Shira. And so mm -hmm. we were in this weird position where we mm -hmm. had like all the animation done. We had 0, 0.0 left in the budget <laughs> in terms of like what we could do. <laughs> and it was like, all right, we know Adam's fate is what it is. Mm. Do we do this and sort of like take this step knowing that we're going to take some flack and yeah. And we decided to do it. So yeah. we revised the dialogue. It was, for, I mean, you can probably see it in the animation if you really pay attention it's like it's literally our editor like cutting out mouths and like <laughs> puppeting different dialogue wow and the, the, vi the dialogue is, is is pretty vague it's it's sort of the best we could do and that was sort of a, a yeah. you know a process of of sort of discussing what we could actually have them say season seven goes down the way it does pretty pretty i, I think our other big if we could go back and do it again we would not have gone to Comic-Con. Oh. We would not have shown the clip at Comic-Con. Yeah, um, we yeah. learned a, a big lesson about managing expectations. expectations. Yeah. Mm. yeah. For sure. um, it, it's, it's such a weird thing because, you know, as we're, we're in this show, we're making 78 episodes, you kind of get to this point where you really can't see the forest through the trees. Right. Of course, yeah. Like, we lost a bit of our objectivity. Sure. Yeah. And so we'd kind of gone through... <laughs> all of these versions of, of the Adam and Shiro scene. Mm. And so when we kind of got to this point where like some light was peeking in and, and people were revisiting yeah. um, what we could do, we wanted to celebrate it. Like, we, of course, were, so we were like freaking out. No, I, I mean, I, I, I was there during that Comic-Con panel. I talked to you guys right after. Yeah. And and I, I was literally, I, I, had, <laughs> I had been at the Geek and Sundry and Alpha party the night before. I had stayed out way too late. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> And I was sitting next to my friend Michelle, and during that scene between Cheryl and Adam, it was very clear to us that they were a couple. Like right. she, like I remember, she like started when my friend Michelle gets excited, she just hits people. <laughs> so she starts very like, -like. She, she yeah. starts like hitting my arm, and then we were both so excited. We like tried to lean in, but we were both very tired, and we clocked heads. <laughs> and yeah, and I and I, but again for me it was like I and I I I texted Josh, and I was like. Oh my God, this is so great. Yeah. And yeah, and and I remember watching season seven in you know, in the comfort of my own home and right. and and seeing how things went down for Adam and feeling sad, but also thinking, who, I have a feeling there's gonna be some people that are really yeah. mad about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I mean, totally understandable. Yeah. I think Yeah, I think like again, once once that came down, it kind of snapped us and made us realize, sure. oh yeah, this is what we didn't see. Right. Yeah. Like this is, this is what happens when you're like so like laser focused on a show that you you don't get to kind of view it through the mm. fans' eyes anymore. You're kind of right. just yeah. In that creator I, I space. think also you know you were contending with a, a fan base um, who so like growing up. Right. Uh, I was really into Gundam Wing. Yeah. So <laughs> I watched to well. me, it is not surprising that there's such a large uh, sort of young teenage girl fan base of this show because it sparked a lot of the same sort of uh, like fandom interests that I had for Gundam Wing when I was same. when I was a, when I was a teenage girl. Sure. Yeah. Girls sure. like uh, fighting robots. Girls like fighting robots so and, and, yeah. and cute boys piloting them. That's I'm just I, I'm but just also, throwing that out there. But also Robots like also genuine character. I, yeah. I think that's the thing that... Oh, yeah, that, definitely. And that, it, it dawned... <clears throat> I think we knew it because we had worked on, like, Avatar, and we sure. had worked on Korra, and we knew that there was an audience thirsting for that type of content. Yeah. Um, so when we go to Comic-Con, and the crowds... Every time we went to a different con, it was, like, more and more female representation mm -hmm. in, the, in the crowds, and yeah. more and more questions about characters, and not so much about the big, you know... Definitely. Yeah. You know, I think... Our, our sort of like machine was in place for what the show was being marketed towards and we mm. were like that's a train that is not really stopping yeah but our audience we recognize is, is diverting absolutely a, and, another way and not to not to bring other shows into it but there are other shows where they they experience that same sort of 
pressure point where the the show was intended for a particular demographic to sell particular merchandise yeah. to a particular group and when another group latches on to it and gets really excited about that instead of sort of course correcting and being like oh we can we can sell to this group instead the show gets taken off the air yeah and it's like viewed as a failure or whatever yeah young justice uh. yeah <laughs> Name no, any names. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we know that's what happened to it. But, yeah. the, but the great <laughs> and thing, now though, it's back. Yeah, yeah, it's back because I think culturally we're in a very different place with regards to what animation oh, yeah. is, who it's yeah. playing to. Um, shows, which is awesome. Yeah, the sh the type of shows that we always wanted to make and always wanted to work on. Mm. I think we talked a little bit about this last week, but there was no avenue to really make those shows yeah. when we started Voltron. And we were very used to playing in our animation boys' toys box. Mm -hmm. right. And now those avenues exist, mm -hmm. which is magnificent. Yeah. It's huge for us because you know, there was a time when we honestly, we didn't know if we'd see it in our career. We, yeah. were, we were always the sad people. We're like, we're in America. If we were in Japan, <laughs> right. we could make some right. shows, what we could know? do. But we were also like, we're going to have to figure out really clever ways to like work in, yeah. you know, these bigger elements and these sure. more mature well, storylines. That's what you guys were talking about a lot last week mm. is wanting to make the show something bigger than what people expected it right. to be, to elevate yeah. it to something yeah. more important. But I, yeah. so, I mean, We'll continue on and sort of like explain how everything played out all the way on through yeah. through the the epilogue stuff, but to to DreamWorks credit, like look, they they afforded us a ton of freedom yeah. to explore story and build characters with depth, and yeah. like like heart wrenching backstories where like. Oh, for is sure. Is this villain, like, am I feeling true emotion for this villain's like arc right now? This is you know that that stuff mm. that in in these types of shows. Um, it's sort of few and far between. And I know, you know, I'm sure there's a whole contingent of, of the fan base. It's like, you know, whatever, dude, big excuse. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I get it. We all get it. We've all, we've all sort of been there, but for us, it was, it was a big deal. Yeah. You know, I'm never, ever going to get over baby Lotor. Yeah. <laughs> it's tragic. It's sad. I know. He's so cute. I know. Why did they animate him so cute? I know. <laughs> His eyes were so big. <laughs> I know. And that's I was, where we get full anime. I was having a baby at the, like uh, well, the, around that yeah. same time. And I was like, my son! <laughs> <laughs> Look at my son! Right. Uh. And, and talking about a little bit about representation, uh, I know that obviously the Adam and Shiro and the, the epilogue is what a lot of people really wanted us to discuss tonight. But yeah. um, I had one or two people reach out also wanting to discuss a little bit of Ezor and Zethrid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. That was when when they got their final story beat, I was so I was so satisfied with it. It mm. was Yeah, me too. I again I don't want to speak for anybody except for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I right. don't yeah. represent any group other than me, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, my opinions are my own. But seeing their relationship and seeing the the way their arc went I was very satisfied um, with their sort of redemption arc and sort of all but confirming that, yeah, they were a couple. Right. Yeah. As the biromantic ace woman on the panel, I believe I screamed space pirate lesbians when that <laughs> happened. Mm -hmm. Can confirm. Yeah, <laughs> space I, pirate I enjoyed lesbians. that. As well as my new ship, Varaksha. Varaksha. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about as legit a ship as you're going to get. Emma, yeah. Emma texting me in the middle of my, my watch through season eight going, hey, they've had one conversation and I'm all about it. I just want Rizavi to puppet master all of this. She is the one, like, leaving notes in people's lockers. <laughs> right. We're going, hey, hey, do you want to eat lunch together? We're, and not Love only her. that, she's yeah. taking Kincaid's camera and turning this into a show. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. It's like real world on it's, the Atlas. I was going to say, I was, I was going to say it's like Terrace House. How dare you? <laughs> Generational, you kids. It's real world. She just brings the footage back, oh. puts one clip of it on the internet and says, selling it to the highest bidding network. Yes. Go. I, I am positive that Zara, uh, Zara would, would absolutely love this and would totally be down to reprise her role <laughs> to make the show a reality. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you would allow me to just continue with the of thread course. before we get yeah. to side yeah. 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 Please do. <laughs> Fallout, season seven, actual depression, like terrible studios, like what is going on? And, and they sort of turn to us at this point, you know, I think Shira is either in development or they're full tilt sort of yeah. going. And the studio's like sort of figured out where they stand. Mm. So awesome. I yeah. mean, it's awesome. 
Yeah. We wish it had happened a little earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it's really cool. Um, and they sort of turned to us and said, you know, how how do you want to address this? How do you want to handle this? And, you know, we had, at that point, we had already put out our sort of public statements because sure. we just felt like, oh, my gosh, like. What do we do? But yeah, yeah, the world's mm-hmm. coming down on us. Um, rightfully so. <laughs> um, and so we sort of crafted the, the you know, Shiro and Curtis uh, mm. marriage. As, as a result, it, w- it was sort of like a, like a sub-complaint that came out of the Adam and Shiro thing, which was like, hey, appreciate it, but what was there was kind of... Not clear. It was kind of not really yeah. clear. Like, yeah. It wasn't explicit. It wasn't, you know, they weren't looking for anybody to, like, be, like, kissing or, you know, doing anything like that, but they wanted something a little bit more tangible. Yeah. Um, so this was our way of, like, reaching out to the fans, and it was like a like a sort of animated, yeah. up the, you know, apology or, like, a, an a- animated sort of olive branch. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean... I also think that it, it it sort of needs to be said that in terms of the fan base that mm. there is a difference between wanting representation right. and wanting your ship to be canon. Mm. And I think a sure. lot of this was yeah. disappointment yeah. that one ship did not become canon. Sure. And just because your ship's not canon sure. doesn't mean you're a bad person. No, no. It doesn't and, mean yeah. it's a bad and ship. On, and on top of that, it you is chill. Com- and, and on top of that is it is completely okay to want both. They're mm-hmm. not independent of one another, but there there is a level of of you have to recognize that your ship is about you. It's right. about you nine times out of ten, especially when it comes to young women. Um, exploring your sexuality in a way that is very safe right. because it doesn't involve any women. But it's about you. It's not about you wanting representation necessarily. I think there's yeah, there's <laughs> definitely that. I, I think there's also, you know, I think you can't deny when like two beautiful people oh, are yeah. in a room, you're like, yeah, they should be doing <laughs> something. <laughs> it feels yeah. um, but I think sh- sort of the shipping phenomenon in general also speaks to the fact that there's just a hugely underserved yes. portion of the fandom oh, that's it's just 100% not seeing the content true. that they want to yeah, see. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, you know, I've enjoyed a lot of the like <laughs> fan content that's yeah, coming sure. out of Voltron. Sure. Uh, no, the 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 fan community, um, in terms of the artistic stuff that comes yeah. out, it's it's incredible what people create. Yeah. And uh, the fact that you guys have been able to inspire that creativity shouldn't also be something that's diminished. Oh, de- um, definitely not. But, the, yeah. But for for all of the um, the LGBTQ uh, audience members who maybe felt conflicted with with this particular mm. epilogue, I know one person reached out to me going that they wanted more, and one person reached out that like they felt that it like Shiro walking away from the military wasn't something that fit his character right. and oh, and that's yeah. actually something we we'd like to speak to you about because I I don't necessarily agree with that assessment. I I totally understand where that perspective comes from, but the way it was worded in terms of he left the battle behind mm-hmm. I yeah, he he has been through so much in this series that yeah, I understand where people have a lot of issues with it, but I think him leaving the military and going and living a normal life with somebody that he cares about, I think that's a very fitting end for somebody who had been through so much trauma. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I see both perspectives on that of as course, well, but I'm, I'm more on your... I, I'm more of the same opinion as you of I, that didn't feel out of character mm. for him, for me. I, I mean, I don't know. I think we saw it as like... The dude had been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. had. Um, you know, we, the circumstances at which we sort of arrived at, at that scene didn't allow us like a, we had like a day yeah. to really like put that together. Um, and you're, and you're it's, talking it's, about the whole like conversation of everybody sitting around the table leading into the like post stuff on the end? Uh, no. no. Like everything, everything before. Everything fully animated right. was set in oh, okay. stone. Right. Um, Epilogue and on was was stuff that we made some adjustments. Some stuff was similar, mm-hmm. if not the same right. as before. Um, and we just tried to ultimately do what we felt was right, which was give the people who wanted it that legitimacy of yes, Shiro, one of our main characters, is in fact part of the LGBT community. Yeah. It's on screen. There's right. there's no question anymore. 
um, we unfortunately couldn't make a full fledged relationship at that point sure. because you know the show was done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, there's no time, there's no budget. Animation takes forever. It, it, it was it was that situation where we were sort of like, do we do this? Don't we do this? And we thought it was just more important to do it to confirm it to be able to like yeah. show people in a very clear manner. Um, and we, I think, sort of wholeheartedly accept that it's clunky. Yeah. <laughs> it's hella clunky. Like, and, and yeah. you know, we, we sort of... Yeah, it's far from perfect. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, when the opportunity presented itself, yeah. I think we would have felt badly if we had not tried to seize that. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that's fair. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was sort of like this weird opening where like DreamWorks was in this like figuring out where they stood and, and the opportunity presented itself and we were sort of like, we, we kind of have to jump on this or it might go away. It might be something. Mm -hmm. that, and, you know, again, like to the, to the studio's credit, like I think they've sort of figured it out. They've obviously afforded us the ability to create something beyond just like a, a show about like a robot. Made well, of lions that slices yeah, another I mean, monster. I, mean, it, 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 well, I was going to say it was it was definitely not a monster of the week kind of show no, by any no. stretch of the imagination. Um, so that in of itself is it's kind of a weird victory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I will just say, like at the very end of it, at the very base of things, people in American society, let's be real, tend to view LGBT LGBTQ content, all of that LGBTQIA content as automatically mature for some reason. And we touched on, like, yeah, violence is okay, really but God forbid you see two dudes kiss. This is a show that is aimed at 8 to 11-year-old boys, and at the end of it, we had two men explicitly kissing at their wedding. Yeah. You may not like the execution, you may not like who it was, you may think it came out of nowhere, but guys, we got it in yeah. a quote-unquote kids show. That's yeah. a hell of a milestone. Yeah. I, I think we all had to acquiesce at some point and sort of, and DreamWorks too sort of yeah. had to say like, hey, your audience is what your audience is. It's no longer like what we were sort of building Thinking this franchise was, around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that's awesome. The, the, the organic nature at which the audience sort of grew and evolved and sort of became super proactive in like creating content and, and uh, sort of created their own series alongside ours. Yes. It was awesome. I it mean, it's, it was great. Uh, so I think they they just sort of like, at the very end, they were just like, guys, just do what you think is right. And, mm. and we used our heart. There's a ton we would have we would have done differently, but I, to Armchair Quarterback, 78 episodes over four years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is what we're yeah. doing. Which is what exactly. we're doing. Yeah. But That's I mean, yeah. kind of what we're here to, for. To, like, really break it down and, and try to, like, say, if we had zigged where we zagged, like, that there's it, there's no yeah, real, but, real yeah. good Well, because, yeah, because you, you could go on about that forever, but it's all in the past at this point, yeah. so. And the other thing is, like, believe me, I've been, like, up at night going, like, should we have done anything at all and just saved ourselves a headache? And it's like, no, I think we did the right thing under yeah. the circumstances given. I, I agree. You know? Yeah. Well, because I kind of want to, I'd actually like to top this off with a comment from Red Lantern 27 in chat, because I think they encapsulated it. It's like how Team Voltron tackles their problems. Might not be the most elegant, but it gets the job done. <laughs> yeah. So I think, unless there's anything else you'd like to no. add at the end there, um, I think we can finish that conversation. We are halfway through our show. That's insane. <laughs> at this point. Thank goodness they yeah. gave us more studio time. Right. That was an hour. Does anyone want another drink? <laughs> oh, I do. I'm I not do. actually kidding. Would you like another drink? I, I mean, got, I got coffee. I'll, say, I'll have some more. <laughs> are these ruby shot glasses? Yes. Yes, yes, yes they there's are. There's a ruby one and one attack on Titan. One because, uh, because Voltron is made for kids and therefore we <laughs> don't, don't have, have shot official glasses. shot glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I Although, am hey, if anyone wants to send me some, I'd be down. I uh, am wearing <laughs> officially licensed Voltron merchandise. I will have you know. That's awesome. Yes, I this is a child shirt because I wanted it in red and it didn't come in red it's in adult so sizes. It fits perfectly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I you. am wearing hilariously unlicensed Voltron oh. merch because there isn't a licensed one that says see you later Paladin. That's, and awesome. I mean, that was that's pretty good. Apt. Emma, please help me. Oh yes, this <laughs> is yours. Here we go. Yeah. I did. I did. I did. There. You know, it was bound to happen. It was. It so, was. Yes. We'll clean and it really up after the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is future Katie's problem. It and is. And while we're having our intermission, 
and I think we also have an announcement. All right. Hey, guys, before we move on to our next topic, we wanted to say thank you for making us the ESPN of TV Talk. For us to continue to grow, we could use your help. If you're on YouTube right now, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And if you're on iTunes, please please give us a five-star rating. But no matter where you are, leave us a comment so that you can get involved in the conversation. Being a part of AfterBuzz TV has meant so much to all of us, and we truly appreciate you supporting us and doing what we love. Don't forget to tell your friends and keep enjoying our show. And yeah, guys... Uh, this is this is our last show, and it really means a lot to us that yeah. you guys have stuck with us uh, throughout the entirety of this show's run. We love, as Katie said earlier, our Tavern of Lions. <laughs> and, uh, everybody who's in the hashtag and everybody who's ever done fan art for, for our silly nonsense. Oh, yeah. There's some it, good yes. fan art from the show. Oh, there's <laughs> some <laughs> good. Really good and, fan art. And it, it really means a lot to us. And, um, yeah, go ahead, Katie. Yeah. Take it from here before I cry. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to read the iTunes reviews. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, do you want to do the iTunes spiel and then I'll, I'll read yeah, the reviews? Yeah, thank you to everyone who has supported us on iTunes. And you can still do that even after the podcast is over. If you leave a comment, if you leave a rating, leave us five stars because there are five lines in Voltron and that's how this works. Um, yeah, it helps people who are searching for the podcast find us. It helps bump us up in the iTunes ranks. And, um, well, if you leave one after this, you won't get a shout out because mm. that's life. But for those who left one a little bit uh, earlier, we like to do shout-outs on the show. And uh, apologies to anybody who left one where I'm not getting the chance to read it out. Uh, the iTunes sort of filter thing in terms of uh, putting it in chronological order does not work on my mobile device, so I sort of have to scroll and guess at what... Um, so if I miss you, I'm so sorry. Please screen cap it and put it in the hashtag. Uh, but we've got one from Kiwi12343. Yay, almost done, though I am sad to see the podcast go voltron has helped me through a lot of crap thank you for the for the thing i could look forward to on mondays uh and then we have m lara three four five six thank you so much for the show you are also amazing i've been watching for just a year and it's been so much fun i'm going to miss it once it's over but i'm glad i was able to watch it geeking with you and the guest is just the best it's time to form voltron and then uh, we have one from Oz Gant. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I found After Buzz with Ruby Volume 2, and I have thoroughly enjoyed all of the animation after shows. I have unfortunately been unable to catch a live Voltron show, but I've listened to them all. Since it's the last episode, we can finally talk about the biggest surprise of the whole show. That's right, after eight seasons, Hunk finally took off his headband. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the yes. thing too. Yeah. <laughs> I love the reviews so long and thanks for all the fish. Okay. For me, Hunk's epilogue was perfect. Yes. The fact that Ramel was like part of his his space cook crew, I was like all in. <laughs> and all right. Right. Sal. Yes. And Shay and Bebo V. It was so good. It was so good. Um, and so this again, is the new Avengers crew. I yes. Like <laughs> again, apologies if I if I couldn't find mm. it. Um, but again, thank you all so so much. We yeah. love you. You're all the best. Yeah. Yeah. And seriously, thank you guys for participating. Mm. This has been so much fun, and we it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun without yeah. all y'all beautiful humans. Even if we don't agree, if you don't agree with us, sure. if we don't agree with you, if we don't agree with each other, it's okay. I don't agree with myself. <laughs> <laughs> we, like that the, must make life real interesting. The, the bottom line here is that this show was always meant to be fun, mm -hmm. and we had fun doing it, and yeah. we hope you've had fun watching us. Yeah. Yes. And I think, too, just, you know, being open to the fact that people have different opinions than you and then and that that's okay is a really important message yeah. to kind of put out there as well <laughs> absolutely so it's, just, it's a message that i learned like probably a little too late for my like, immature <laughs> yeah. little girl ass like when i was in eighth grade right. and, like the most important thing was the fact that my best friend bought the same Target sandals I had, mm. and how angry I was that she had the same Target sandals that me and 20,000 other Target mm -hmm. shoppers had. <laughs> like, and I look back at that, and I'm just like, why did I waste so much energy, energy. Mm -hmm. on the dumbest thing in the universe? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also, but also, you know, acknowledging the fact that uh, that people's uh, that, like your opinions are valid. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and look, I think a lot of people have, you know, as I've sort of been trying to come to terms with, with yeah. negative reaction, positive reaction, all the reaction, um, but mainly the negative reaction, um, you know, a lot of people have sort of said to me, like, 
dude, just tell him it's a stupid cartoon and like not to think too it's much about it. Not but it's not. That's not how that works. It's not. Yeah. And, and, and for me, these shows growing up literally formed the person that I yeah, am now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it means it means as much as it means to people because that's you know yeah. that's that's their world and that's that's what their takeaway. And if they don't, if they're not getting or seeing themselves represented properly or or yeah. seeing some sort of representation that they can latch onto or understand or or maybe they felt like they were on their way to seeing that and then were let down by the fact like i i get it yeah you know i think we get it yeah it's a it's a struggle that we we've dealt with a lot just in in our careers that animation is it's a medium, mm. but a lot of times it's considered a genre. A genre. Yeah. And yes. it's something that like continues even to this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That we're constantly fighting this battle of like, no, you can make we, we try to point to anime, which yes. they have every time I know. Of thing, and, and yet, a show about specifically tennis. And and yet anime is often by yes. Western audiences who are not familiar with the medium right. considered to be a genre. genre. I have Absolutely. so many people being like, what should I watch to get into anime? And I'm like, what kind of stories do you exactly. like? Exactly. Yeah. Do you I like stories? Exactly. I took my uh, tiny, tiny child to see Princess Mononoke because it's animated and for kids, right? And I'm like, <laughs> no, that will traumatize your five-year-old. Right. It's yeah, a work of art, don't. but it will traumatize right. your child. I, and I feel like anyway. <laughs> video games went through a similar thing. For yeah, them. they did. With you know, parents bringing Grand Theft Auto back and yelling at GameStop employees like, "Why did you sell this like, to my kid?" And like, it's rated mature. Like it says right there. <laughs> yeah. If you as a parent aren't checking this, yeah. Um, but it's you know, content is content. Yeah. And we wholeheartedly believe that animation is content that people go to. I agree. And, and it it shouldn't be kind of reduced to to just like it's for kids. Yeah. Yeah. That said, mm. we should also. I will just sort of self-check. Mm-hmm. We should have been aware of like sort of what we were asking, not oh, only DreamWorks to sh- do, oh, sure. but ask the IP to do. We were asking this show yeah. to do things and sort of like break out in certain ways that were like, uh, you know, we needed to learn. We learned a lot. Yeah. We needed to learn how to manage some of our tone and stuff back up mm-hmm. the sort of executive chain. Better. It was just a learning experience yeah. all the way around the block. It's yeah. it, it's interesting to me because you know obviously we were touching a little bit on how DreamWorks has kind of opened their minds a yeah, little yeah, bit sure. to to some of the stuff that you guys came up against in Voltron. Not necessarily with them. It was a bigger issue of lots right. of people owning the IP. Right. But I I I I do wonder this because I feel like it's easier. Or it seems to be more common to me that in shows that are targeted at a female audience, it's more likely that you're going to find a, a wider breadth of representation. I'm not going to disagree I, with you. Yeah. I mean, I think wholeheartedly that that is just genuinely the truth. And yeah. I think a lot of it stems from you know, that kind of toxic masculinity mm. culture that we're still trying to push right. on to little boys. Of right. Like, yeah. This is and weak. This, you can't exactly. these things. Well, and, and to Voltron's credit, very much was trying to, like, I don't want to say undermine's not the right word, but we it was... We were just it, trying to, like, break the trope. Yeah, break the we trope. We were our exactly. own trope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Voltron was its own trope, and the, and, the, and the sort of little nook that we inhabit of, like, sort of boys' toys was its yeah. own weird, tropey situation. I think before anybody realized it i mean we were obviously aware but it was like we were we were very much a show for everybody yeah you know and that Absolutely. just that just kind of happened um yeah. so yeah which is a, a good thing <laughs> uh should we talk about lance guys yeah, yeah. Okay. we need Let's to move on all right we gotta move on because we got i feel the, the clock ticking <laughs> yeah the clock is actually off but my ipad is kind of okay. accurate it's just like Farmer okay. boy Lance. Oh, I, need, I need to stop trying to plan these shows. They don't ever go as planned. No. Yeah. What plan? <laughs> but um, yeah. Lance. Yeah. Yeah. People want to talk about Lance and okay. they want to hear about Lance. He had an incredible character arc. He did. Um, did you want to intro him or talk to your... Because I, I have feelings about Lance. I think Lauren's like got to. really awesome perspective. I will say that like a lot of people we saw like, oh, Lance ends up being a farmer and like that sucks and... Not to like diminish, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not making Opinions. fun of anybody. Yes. Um, but I grew up spending all my summers on my family farm in Portugal. It was literally like one, especially as I get older. Yeah. It was like one of the most magical experiences uh, that I could ever sort of 
think of now. And it was all about paring things down, getting rid of all the sort of BS that went on in life, mm. living off the land, spending time with family, um, friends and family, and, and, and really getting down to what's important in life. And so I think for anybody to say that like, Lance isn't getting the ending he deserves or he should have been like a hero or he should have been the sharpshooter that went off into the, I, I don't, I don't think that's what it was about. I think Lance had an arc where he learned about himself that he doesn't need to be those things. And, and that was a lot of baggage that he was carrying on top of himself. And mm. so I don't know if, if that were my ending, um, uh, I, it's 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 an ending I, I hope to have to <laughs> yeah. be honest with you um, yeah. I think a lot of people were worried that like the visual of him looking at the Juniberry flower meant that he was like pining away for Allura for the rest of time yeah and it's tragic it's sad it was a love story that played out but he felt loved yeah. I he saw I mean I have my feelings about Lance just because I like as I have a lot of favorite characters in the show mm. But Lance is probably the one that I actually identify with the most. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. as as someone who like I've struggled my entire life with insecurity, with self doubt, with self esteem. As yeah. a girl who grew up watching shows where like almost every female was the woman who was pined after, and like and even in the original Voltron, the show that I loved, every single paladin just wanted to. It you know, was with Alora. the girl. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. That was very yeah. common yeah. in animation for and a long time. It a, still is. I know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was Scarlet and Joe, all of them. Like that never felt beautiful. Like I never felt mm. like I could live up to that, and it mm. kind of it just destroyed my self esteem because I was like, well, then if I'm not pretty, what is my value? Yeah. Like I had no value. And so, sorry, I'm getting emotional. No, no, no. Please have emotion. <laughs> That's why we're here. I'm fairly certain literally all of us have been there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've worked through it. I've, of I, course. You know, I gained a craft. I, like, I have much more self-esteem now, but it's, there's still those little demons, those little, like, voices that come up and tell you you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so having struggled with that, Lance was kind of, like that character mm. who he mm. had those insecurities and he he handled it in a different way than I did. He put on this really big bravado, bravado that yeah. was like this that was his defense mechanism. Yeah. Like my defense mechanism was sarcasm. And I still have it to this day. Like I cannot get that DNA out of myself. Right. Like yeah. Joaquin has to deal with it. I'm just like whatever. Like I sarcasm <laughs> all day long and he's just like Jesus. I love it. But um but like you know, everyone copes with it their own ways. Mm. And I've known the people who, I, I know those people who they put on the bravado. Yeah. And so the beauty to me of Lance kind of coming to this place where he's, he's able to abandon that. Mm -hmm. Everything that he wanted, all of these parades, all of this, these big shenanigans was stuff that he needed other people to see, to feel, so they knew mm. he right. was important because he didn't feel it. Yeah. And so, Finally, when he feels it inside, like you don't need other people to tell you anymore. And so, you know, I, I, when I finally started to feel like I had something to bring to the world, like suddenly I was happy, like in myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't need, like, I would be just as happy to be making this show and have no one know my name as I am to be able to sit here and talk to the fans about it. Mm -hmm. um, because it, I'm just doing something that I believe in. And I feel like that's exactly what Lance was doing. Mm. At the end, he realized, like, there's also the story element of that I think maybe we probably didn't make clear, but Lance is you know, back on Earth with his family, and he's helping Earth to recuperate. Right. He's working yeah. on this farm. He's providing, like, vital resources that people need because Earth didn't just bounce back, and that was important to him. And he's able to do it you know, on a farm where there's these flowers, there's all these juniperberry flowers. Right. And that was another thing. It was a casualty of time right. in, sure. in the finale, but we wanted to have this really beautiful moment where as Allura's made the sacrifice, juniperberry flowers are everywhere. Everywhere, mm -hmm. like on every everywhere. planet. Everywhere. Yeah. And so he, he, he's it's able to weed. look at this. <laughs> <laughs> They're an invasive species, it's a problem. <laughs> He's able to kind of remember her everywhere he goes. So it wasn't really supposed to be like, oh, my life has no meaning unless right. I'm looking at this flower and thinking of Allura. It's no. just like, I'm, I'm content and I'm happy. I have the people that I care about most and I'm doing something that I feel is important. And it doesn't have to be big and flashy. Sure. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, that's, it is a slightly more sort of mature idea to get across. Um, Definitely. And there's a lesson to be learned on our end too. We really... 
sort of stuck to our guns and tried to make a show that was didn't have clean endings or super like sort of stereotypical happy endings. A lot of it is bittersweet. A lot of it is sort of dealing with the loss of somebody and and the hope that that inspires you know in mm-hmm. their sacrifice. Um, that being said, our big lesson is like sometimes people just want to have the happy ending. Sure. So that's mm-hmm. stuff that you have to sort of weigh against yeah. your art, against your craft. Like, mm-hmm. are we serving the people best or are we serving our own sort of personal story desires best? Like, what, what's that balance? Yeah. Well, and and, it's, and a, it's a case by case basis. It is. It is. And there's something I want to clarify specifically about Lance's ending, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the uh, pushback that I've seen is, well, he's sad forever. He's sad forever and ever. And I'm like, uh, when you lose someone, you do miss them. Mm-hmm. The yeah. grief heals, but it never is completely gone because this person is gone from your life. That doesn't necessarily mean that he never got over it. It doesn't no. mean that he never fell in love with anyone else. It it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that he just stopped where he was emotionally. We just got to see a couple years into the future and the trajectory that he's on. And, and I think that, again, is sort of our, 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 our learning place. I think if... Mm-hmm. if we had, uh, again, not to armchair quarterback too hard, but mm-hmm. I would have loved to have just had a scene like back at the garrison and he's like teaching a class and there's some jerky kid that's just like he was. <laughs> yeah. And he's like mature to the point where he's like, okay, soldier, sure. like, all right, I yeah. get you. Like, yeah. That that would have been nice. And I think that would have been something that, you know, it wouldn't have been like sort of the relationship maybe that everybody was looking for, but it would have been the closure that people saw. Like, okay, Lance is like, he's doing the thing, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, there's no real good, I, easy answer. I'll tell you there. what ending I was super jealous of <laughs> that you guys were there for, but it was the Star Wars Rebels ending. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Where, like, you know, uh, oh. Ezra makes his, his sacrifice, and then so Sabine... Good. Is like oh. he's out there and I'm gonna find him. It's like, man, if we could have just I ripped know. that ending and Lance is like, Laura's out there and I'm gonna find her. Like that would have been so oh, cool. But man. then we would have le- legit just ripped Star Wars Rebels. Rebels. Like, and, and the show was done, so we, were, no, we really true. couldn't yeah. do that. Well, and I, I mean, and I think that's kind of circling back to some of the stuff that you were talking about of like. The idea of there not being a like clean cut happy ending, all loose ends are tied up kind of thing. Because life doesn't that, work. Because life way. doesn't, doesn't work that way. That's yeah. And true. so for me, you know, the the rebels ending was incredibly satisfying right. because it's like, well, we could tell more stories with these people, but if we don't, we've got a we got a we good end a to this one. story. Yeah. 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 Um, and that and that I I really do feel even though for me. I was not a big fan of the the Lance and Alora romance. Yeah. I didn't like it very much. Yeah. But that's but again, that's about me. And that's fine. About no. you guys. But honestly, yeah, I, I think loved you... it. And we can disagree. And exactly. Still be friends. Yes. Here's here's the one sort of point of contention that I have because I could totally see everybody's sort of view on it. Of course, it. yeah. When people were like, it came out of nowhere, we were like we were literally setting up Lance's angle on that, like Yeah. Yeah. A ways out. Sure. Yeah. You know, no, no, he was no. sitting there confessing to the mice like how he felt and well, totally. Like, and then the mice one. go rat him out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> episode one. Right. Granted, he flirted with every single girl, right. but like episode one, you know, he it's clear that he kinda kinda likes this but girl. That's, that's and, also and like, it develops from there. As as content creators, like, do we sort of read the tea leaves on that and sort of lean into where fans' expectations are? Or do mm-hmm. we sort of go with, with the story that we were crafting and sort of stick to our guns there? I, you know, yeah. sometimes there's some people in real life that end up with people where you're like, huh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. um, that's not questions. necessarily what serves story best, yeah. but that is kind of life. I had this whole love triangle fantasy that was going on for that <laughs> last season. Hey. In my mind, it was playing out, and that was fine. But again, like I say, like that's that is about me. It's not about the story. Like for me, I was like, okay, yeah, this is the direction I thought they might go right. with the whole Lance and Laura thing, and, was, and you know, it was it it was not what I wanted to happen. Right. But that doesn't make it a bad story. Right. Well, I mean, I could see the argument where it's like, it's basic. It's yeah. like what we've come to kind of expect, expect. from, you yeah. know, okay, so the yeah. guy sort of turned around. and But I think Lance's arc, aside from like mm-hmm. being with Alora, was was bigger. Oh, than no, the I agree. And, I, and, and Lance's overall story arc, oh. I really enjoyed, especially right. because, you know, it's, it's one of the things that we've been talking about is this whole idea that we were basically 
we were dealing with an IP that was, again, like Monster of the Week. It was like dudes being in love with one hot girl right. and uh, and just macho men with fighting robots right. and whatever was happening with Pidge. Right, yes. <laughs> yes. OG Pidge was insane. Like, totally bonkers. OG um, Pidge was terrifying. Uh, Descended from a clan of ninjas, by yep. the way. Yep, <laughs> but, uh, but Did listen, the ninjas last long? Well, uh, you know, not very class. stealthy ninjas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but what I what I will say is that I, I think a lot of, of Lance's storyline, I mean, it was, it was across the board with all of the characters, honestly, both the men and the women, but, but very importantly the men, mm. that they had a range of emotions, they had feelings, they had insecurities, yeah. they had, you know, emotional walls built up that it was explained why they were and and all of that is is great they we were tried. allowed to be a, <laughs> they were allowed to be afraid they yeah. were allowed to be unhappy they were allowed to be broken they were allowed to not be right about everything yeah. and not be leaders and be wrong in the face of other people yeah and the show went yeah that's okay that's hey, normal and, and you, by can, the way, you can I mean, do that and we, still be a good person we'd go to the writer's room and sort of get pitched ideas and we would be like Oh man, like I don't know how I feel about that. And it would be like that's exactly why we should do it because yeah. it, 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 you need to ask those questions. Like let's ask those questions, mm -hmm. get those things sort of. Yeah, I mean, like I had my own like <laughs> personal interests like with Pidge, and I was like I had my agenda that I was gonna expose all of these like double standards <laughs> and like yeah. and it was purely agenda based. And like Tim, you know our lead writer had to kind of check me and be like, yeah. Lauren, <laughs> this show isn't about your agenda. <laughs> right, right. Like what you're trying to do, you're gonna hurt the story if you mm -hmm. try to if you try to work this in and like a way. Yeah. And I had to take a step back and like look at myself mm -hmm. and look at the story and be like, okay, what's important for the story? Because obviously we always have our preferences. Right. We always mm -hmm. have our likes. And and like Joaquin said, you'll get a, a story thing thrown at you and you'll knee jerk and be like, no, 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 I don't want that to happen to that kid. Yeah. Yeah. I love you like, so that's, much. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of why you have to let those things happen. Sure. And they're, they're like weird experiments and some of them work mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. of them don't work. And some of them are, you know, sort of fall in this weird gray area where people are just like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like, know what to do well, with this. Well, that was a thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> this might as well occur. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I That's, mean, it's silly. Yeah. It's it's so dumb, and I, we might have said this, you know, before. But like, a lot of people sort of attributed a lot of their sort of personal perspectives to like Shira having PTSD and and sure, Shira being this yeah. pillar of strength and and having gone through these trials and tribulations and and being an amputee. I hate to admit this because it's so basic and simple. But like, the only reason he had a robot arm is because I'm like, dude, can we have a guy with a robot arm? <laughs> Like, Winter Soldier is rad. Yeah. You know, Cable is rad. Yeah. Solid Snake is rad. Amazing. And I just want a, a robot, robot arm, arm, dude. Yeah. And, and that was it. And so... I mean, it's a similar thing you know, with Pidge. And, you know, my super selfish freaking little girl fantasies mm -hmm. was just like, here's a girl and she's masquerading as boy. And then, you know, she ended up being kind of this pillar of hope for the trans community mm -hmm. and so like i can't take credit for that because like yeah. i didn't go fully into that but it's beautiful that yeah. it happened mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i can look at that now and i can see yeah where it came from i i think that that it just sometimes happens pretty unexpectedly in a lot yeah. of you know sort of ip i mean yeah. i i remember when uh, you know yuri on ice was this big sensation and even though for the most part obviously it the it is lauded for its LGBTQ representation, but on top of that, there was a certain um, like subset that of the like asexual community that were like, I sort of see Yuri as asexual, and mm. I feel represented, and and that's a good thing. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I will say, Boy, just sort of looking yeah. at <laughs> looking at it holistically, though, like Lauren's sort of desire to like build that into the character, and my desire to build yeah. that into character are two completely disparate things because I just wanted robot arm dude and she was like telling this meaningful like <laughs> inside thing. I was like, how about that robot arm, guys? The Venn so. diagram overlap but, yeah. but finding meaning in it's something exactly. that you didn't initially pitch that way. Yeah, that's yes. exactly well, that's it. it. And sometimes the fans will find this mm -hmm. extra meaning that we had no clue was going to come out of it. Yeah. And I, I had a directing professor way back in the day who, who mentioned that sometimes 
brilliant moments like that happen completely by accident or it's an unintended sort of thing and the fact that it's there should be celebrated because it's it, it's kind of it ties into death of the author author a little bit like mm. did the author intend that well does it matter if that's your interpretation right. yeah it's okay yeah. I I, uh, I once heard this story. I was a huge, um, you know, sort of child of the '90s. Listened to grunge music growing up. <laughs> Pearl Jam was like my favorite band. Uh, and I heard this story once that like this group of like campers were singing this song "Black" by Pearl Jam in the forest. And Eddie Vedder like comes out of the woods oh, and is like, "Stop singing this song!" <laughs> and everybody's like, <gasps> and he was like. He was coming to that. I don't know if that's true. It could be total Dang. grunge urban legend. I don't know. I like the story, though. And but, he's still in those woods. <laughs> to this day. But he was, you know, his his version of the song was not their version of the song. And they found a different meaning. For him, it was torture. For them, it was like this like mm-hmm. sort of nostalgic coming together. And so he had to admit that as well. And I've heard other songwriters say the same thing, where it's like, it's no longer ours. It's, it's theirs. Yeah. Um, and that's that's beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And as I say, I, I feel like, you know, uh, just kind of circling back to what we were talking about uh, with where Lance's story ended. I've seen some really lovely fan art depicting more of Lance's future. <laughs> 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 this is why we believe in fan art. This is why we believe in fan fiction. Just because the official story is over doesn't mean that you can't pick it up and sprint with it. Totally. No, definitely absolutely. not. Have fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, have fun. I we've had a lot of requests for this in chat, and I mm-hmm. think I think we should move on to this. Um, let's talk about Keith. Yeah, yes. let's talk about Keith's story oh. arc. Let's talk about the boy who went from being a lone wolf to being a leader, whether he liked it or not, to embracing being a leader. That was absolutely incredible. Yeah, we stopped. At, we were watching season eight, rewatching it, and at one point. Keith and um, Lance just had that talk about, well, I used to think that I could do everything on my own, and here we are. And I went, oh, my God, you guys, you're all grown up. (laughs) I mean, that's the great thing about, you know, this sort of serialized format is that you do get to see that growth. I will say that, like, Keith is probably the character that we get. There's a huge fan base, Mm -hmm. but he's the one that, like, receives the least amount of flack. It's like people are... Yeah, I I do sort of wonder why that is, um, but I, I but Cause, also because I think we didn't we didn't pair him with anybody. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think we didn't designate sort of where he stood. We don't know. It, it's, it's, we don't know. It, yeah, it it doesn't it doesn't really matter doesn't. to be honest with you. I mean, it, it would be great to confirm just to make people happy, but like at the sure. end of the day, he is who he is, yeah. and, and leaving it open to interpretation, which is why I will say that just going back to Allure and Lance really quick, it took that possibility off the table, that pairing, and I think that's what, what triggered a lot of people, because yep. it was like, you could have just left well enough alone, and we would have been fine, Yeah, and that's yeah, that's a tea leaf reading scenario there as well. You know it what is. I mean? But again, yeah. guys, there's lots of great fan art. Oh. There is. Yeah, you can totally. <laughs> we did that. say no, that uh, he could fall in love again. You yeah. never know. Uh, you never, no, no, ever no. Know. But go I, uh, have fun. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I just loved Keith uh, throughout this whole series. I, I think for me, it was like he was just the the perfect embodiment of that, like emotionally damaged, yeah. like, grumpy boy character. <laughs> he had it all. Uh, yeah. He yeah. was. He was kind of that anime trope, He was totally like, an anime hero. Like, yeah. as, mm-hmm. You know, I watched Gundam Wing as yes. well. And, you know, Hiro Yui was... Like, he was <laughs> tricky for me because, like, at the end, I was just like, I still don't like you. Like, I, I, I don't, there's nothing you yeah. me. You're just you're still kind of an asshole. Yeah. And then, but Keith still actually don't like. like <laughs> still don't Keith like started there. He did. And then, yeah. He evolved to someone that, that I like. I, I like. think that's what it was because he, because Hero was my favorite in Gundam Wing, and Keith is my favorite in Voltron. And I and I really do think that it is because like Keith is what in my like fan brain like hero was going to become okay. and so i feel like i got to experience the evolution that. the further yeah, evolution yeah, yeah. i mean fair. yeah exactly and keith it was very <laughs> satisfying and for me and duo was my favorite and then i just i, yeah. I love duo yeah it was yeah. my favorite too. Yeah. and that braid i was like man how do you get a braid like i know that? <laughs> um, 
It takes yeah. a while. Yeah, you got to grow it up. It's great podcasting for all the listeners there. <laughs> <laughs> Is this but, where we do an ad for Sugar Bear Hair? Like, <laughs> do I look like I'm on my favorite murder? Uh, but my, yeah, with, with Keith, it's so interesting because last season you guys mentioned how one of the initial concept ideas for him was that he was a child soldier. And so it's so that interesting. That was Lance. That was oh, Lance. Yeah, Lance. Lance. That was Lance. That was Lance. Lance. Dang, dude. That was Whoa. back in our super dark phases Whoa. where we were just coming off the of Cora and we were like, everything. We were going to open up on season yeah. seven. Earth Party <laughs> taken over. We had to the kids be a had, battle. Yeah. No, seriously, we yeah, were. That was awesome. it. Earth was we post-apocalypse. We had to recalibrate. Yeah. Like, reset ourselves from Cora times into, like, mm-hmm. colorful lion times. Yeah. But, yeah. but that being said, he still yeah. starts out. He starts out actually in a very similar place as Pidge in, mm-hmm. t- in terms of... I need to protect my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my I family's in space. And I don't care about anything else. And over the course of the series, they they learn at varying speeds yeah. how important this extended family is to them. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, too, with Keith, it was the fact that, you know, that he felt like a very fully formed character in that, you know, as you say, when you first meet him, like, he is very emotionally guarded. Mm-hmm. He's very, I can do all of this on my own. And... I like that we really got into why he was that way. And the fact that he, that like, by like Keith at the beginning of the series, I feel like if, if he had met his mom at the beginning, he would not have connected with her in the way that he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so it was very satisfying to see this person who had grown up so much, like find this meaningful connection with somebody who had not been a part of his life. Yeah. Which is a sort of running theme uh, yeah. in our, our show. And was, I think, you know, maybe you mentioned it on the last one, that was sort of at one point going to be the sort of low tour Keith mm. of it all. Um, they were definitely going to share that element uh, where they were sort of had both feet in two different cultures and mm-hmm. weren't really sure where they stood on everything and, and sort of Keith becoming mm. the, the proper representation of that. Not yeah. the proper, but no, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the sort of like good guy representation. Man, of being the bad guy. now two I sides really the would have loved to see more Keith and Lotor yeah, interaction. It was a whole thing. Uh, I would have really enjoyed that because I, I agree with you that, that I think that I'm trying to think of like another piece of fiction where they kind of explore that whole idea of, okay, you have these two people that are effectively the same thing where they're sort of half in one culture, species, et cetera, half in another. Right. And, and one goes down one path. And yes, and exactly. Goes one down 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 goes path. down the other. Yeah. So th- yeah. there is a nice sort of parallel to both of those characters. Yeah. Um, right. and, and I also really loved Lotor and I loved, loved, loved uh, Anerva's storyline mm-hmm. in the final season so much oh, uh, awesome. her whole her whole backstory and the way it ended oh uh, and it was it was so <laughs> tragic she was just trying to connect with her family which is again ultimately like a lot of what this show is about yeah. is this whole idea of okay well there's your family but then you have to also look at like your extended sort of chosen family yes. and the connections that you've made and Anerva never did that. She was so obsessed with like yeah. reclaiming this family that she lost instead of going, oh, wait, you know, that's in the past. There's nothing I can do about right. it. So maybe I need to expand my horizons. Yeah, she was yeah. obsessed with the past and unable to move on. Yes. And a lot of this show is about, all right, mm-hmm. well, the past will affect you, the past will influence you, but you need to keep moving forward. You can't live in the past. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've also taken a bunch of heat for sort of like the the abuser and abused <laughs> of it all between between Anerva's redemption and Lotor's redemption. Um, and, you know, again, that's we sort of like go back to this. I don't know. It's it's not even like a like a like a hard and fast rule, but it's like th- there really are no clean answers no. in life. You yeah. know, so. Well, yeah, I, I, I I don't know. I, we, for, for me, I, I felt like with Lotor, uh, which what I really enjoyed was this idea of I think that he was fully aware of the fact that he'd gone too far. And that and at that point, instead of going, I need to back off, he made the choice to go, I'm embracing this. <laughs> I like, think that was the tenfold. thing is that there, there was there was committed. a clear delineation. Yes. He, like he. he he breached this like threshold where it's like, dude, yeah. I'm sorry, like I'm past it's too the far. point of no return, and I, I mean that was, you know, yeah. It, but I, safe to say sure. that Anerva probably did the same. Oh, oh yeah, she yeah. Liked yeah. It. You know, oh, she totally um, did. She <laughs> destroyed yeah. so many realities. Yes, right. I mean, there's also a little bit about each of 
Lotor and Anerva's arcs that ultimately served Allura's larger arc, mm -hmm. which was Lotor came along when Allura wasn't quite as ready to be mm -hmm. that super open, understanding diplomat. We saw how she reacted to Lotor, and she was furious. Mm -hmm. And so that interaction ended in a worse way. Yeah. Um, whereas mm. by the time she took on Anerva, she'd kind of made that journey within herself yeah. right? to get to the point where she can see more of the story. She, If she had been able to look at Lotor in a different way, nothing would expect like like excuse yeah. what he did but she may have been able to i don't know, get to a better end with yes. him yes 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 yeah. she wasn't there yet yeah right. yeah there and was more story to tell and <laughs> honestly <laughs> like like we'd be lying if we didn't say you know we weren't meaning to tell a tragic story like it was tragic, it was tragic. Yeah. you know and it was intended to be tragic mm -hmm. and it was intended to it, sort of and on multiple levels like you say of it, it wasn't just tragic that like oh allura has gone and you know she and lance had just gotten together right. and she had this great connection with all the other paladins but i think there is also as you say that that level of also if she'd been here back at the end of Lotor's story, mm. that there would have been not necessarily forgiveness, but more of an understanding of sorts. There, yeah. And this yeah. could have played out differently. Yeah, it could have played yeah. out yeah. Really and, differently. And I and it's, it, I feel like a lot of people sort of forget, too, that early seasons, she didn't know how she felt about Keith. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which was something that I really liked. Yeah. Because... because of course you're going to be prejudiced against somebody who you know is related to, you know, the, the race of people who, as far as you are concerned, destroyed your entire life. Right. Mm -hmm. They murdered all of your people. Right. Your dad is dead because of them. Like, of course you're going to have that prejudice. Right, right. And and so the fact that once Lotor came along, Alora was so willing to to cooperate with him and and to try and see his perspective that in of itself was huge yeah. and then it's almost even more impressive that she comes to this understanding with Anerva because she felt so betrayed by right. Lotor because yeah. she had allowed herself to be like maybe the Galra are cool <laughs> but well, I mean, she's learned so much yeah I, I will say like okay. circumstances sorry you got it is it is oh. it end is it over <laughs> yeah, it's time? not mm -hmm. over yet um, after you finish that thought, we're yeah. hitting our last 20 minutes, okay. and I want to hit a couple of points out sure. of that, but okay. please finish your thought. I, I would just say that, you know, the end that came with, you know, the sort of conversation where Laura was saying goodb her goodbyes to everybody, mm -hmm. and she was sort of asking for Anerva for her help, like, they were all essentially dead at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, existence was over. Like, this yes. was the saving throw <laughs> that Laura was sort of putting out there, so... We, we have sort of said amongst ourselves, we would have loved to take an entire episode to sort of explore that conversation and explore that redemption. Yeah. It sort of was a victim of us just kind of running out running of time. Out of time. Yeah. But I do think that, like, that situation was extreme, you know? And yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I think Laura didn't come to it easily, but she knew it was a decision that had to be made, and, and uh, she knew it was a connection that she had to try to establish with Inerva. Um as much as she believed in forgiveness and, and, and all those things, mm. it was like, you got to either put up or shut up right now because yeah. yeah. this, yeah. this is end game. That you either do this or everyone's gone forever. Right. And I have all one right. more quick thought about Lotor. Better be um, quick. The, <laughs> like, I, I understand where a lot of people come from uh, from that perspective, but I do want to throw out there also, and again, this is just my opinion, just because you are suffering does not give you the right to inflict suffering on other people. And again, he had noble intentions, but at the end of the day, he killed a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah, again, just because you're suffering doesn't mean you get to inflict suffering on other people. I yep. come back to this so often, but mm -hmm. cool motive, still murder. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Brooklyn I... Nine Nine, for that one. All right, we have hit the last <laughs> twenty minutes of our show. Okay. So what I want to hit on really quick for everyone: favorite aspect of the show, character, oh character arc, episode, like favorite aspect, oh. and favorite episode if you can pick mm. one. Oh, I will start to give you all some time to think. Okay. Oh, but it's not going to be long. Yeah, yeah, yeah found family. I yeah. am a sucker for found family in pretty much all forms, and this show was it for me. Starting very much with Keith and Shiro and this friendship that meant so, so much to them, and then enveloping the rest of the Voltron Paladins at different speeds in different ways, and Alora and Koran, and expanding out for the MFEs and the Garrison, and just 
you cared about everyone. You could see that they very much cared about each other, and it didn't have to be romantic, and it didn't have to be blood relationships, just this incredibly strong found family. And then in later seasons, you could see, all right, we've developed this bond. We don't need to focus on it as much. Mm. Shiro and Keith are still incredibly close, but it wasn't Keith's crutch anymore, mm -hmm. so he could move on. He could work with the Blade of Marmora. He could be a better pilot, a better leader. And Shiro, knowing that Keith didn't have to lean on him as much, could go on to lead the Atlas. Like, they're still extremely close, but we didn't have to focus on it. And, like, I love Found Family. I love that we were able to, to develop that. And my favorite episode is still Spaceball. <laughs> <laughs> Full stop. Bam. <laughs> Ride a call to Necker. Have a hallucination. <laughs> I love Spaceball. <laughs> All right, who's next? I'm taking volunteers. Um, I can go. Uh, so, as a kid who grew up with mostly... Western animated TV shows where everything kind of reset episode to episode. Yeah. And then literally, I think I was in high school for the first time I saw Robotech on Toonami, and I realized this story kept going. Yeah. And it was serialized, and it had real stakes. And there was literally, they, they fought the battle against the Zentradi and then had an entire season where they just dealt with the Zentradi, like, living on Earth with them yeah. and trying was, to commingle, yeah. whereas any American show would be like, we won the yeah. battle and it's over. It's done. Um, yeah. It all kind of informed my love of the no reset button. Yeah. Like, there is no ultimate reset. Everything kind of comes at a bit of a cost. There's, there's no purely happy ending. Mm. Like, we've had a lot of, like, Areas where our paladins have had really close scrapes. They they literally saved the world from collapsing with Lotor, but they had to give up their castle ship. Yeah. Um, they brought Shiro back to life, but he no longer had his connection to the Black Line. There's always like some sort of give, and uh, and ultimately in the mm -hmm. big culmination in the end with Alura making the sacrifice. Um, it was just it's a story like it's I guess I'm just a sucker for those stories yeah. like mm -hmm. I I love it when things they kind of happen like real life where if you're if stuff gets that out of hand you can fix it but it's probably not ever going to be the exact same. it comes at yeah. a cost yeah it's yeah. like you rolled a, an, uh, an eight or a nine <laughs> playing a dungeon world there system you where you succeed with consequences That's right. <laughs> totally totally uh, um, yeah. And my favorite episode is is probably still like reunion, just like the emotional stakes. Steve Steve on, and I I think we're on the same wavelength as far as like the stuff that we love. Yeah, and uh, and he knocked that one out of the park for me. So I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm along the same lines, but I will just say that <clears throat> within the framework of that, Ro Robotech was just hands down, like mm -hmm. the most influential thing, sort of animated, uh, I think, on, on both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, it opened our eyes to a lot of stuff. It opened our eyes to sort of there being no boundaries in terms of what animation was, who it was meant for. Uh, I recently had a meeting with like an executive who was dealing with it uh, uh, back in the day when it was originally airing, and he had the same thing that sort of the, the same phenomenon that we were dealing with, what was where he was like, hey, kids were watching this, but then we realized like their sisters and their moms were watching the show with them because it had this... Well, there's so many cool women in Robotech. Like, there why cool wouldn't women. they? But there, was, there was also a through line, a very strong character arc for each one of yes. the characters. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and, and there was all this stuff going on that just didn't have to, you know, it didn't involve like the big robots. They were awesome. Yeah. Um, but there was a ton of other stuff. I would say within the framework of this serialized crazy show, I love the fact that tonally we could go all over the place. Sure. And yeah. we could be as slapsticky as we wanted to and as serious and as dire and as heavy uh, as we sometimes got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Favorite Space episode? Ball. Yeah, Space Ball. <laughs> I would say Monsters and Mana is, is oh, probably yeah. my That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Jam. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I it keeps changing for me because I keep thinking like Space Mall was my knee jerk reaction, but Hanerva's backstory episode oh, so good. Give me a top so three. Good. Uh, 
Yeah, Monsters and Mana. I'm going to go with yeah. <laughs> Monsters and Mana. Uh, be, because uh, I think that was, um, but it's like neck and neck. Day 47 is also Day 47, Day 47 is awesome. Oh, and the, the Voltron show. The, the, er, that's the closest we've gotten to the musical episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. The, uh, and the, the Earth two-parter, which was something I was super excited about because oh. uh, the, the idea of coming back to Earth after the Galra had gotten there first and beat them to the punch, I, I'm super fascinated by what goes on on Earth without Voltron there to save yeah. everyone. It's, yeah. So there, there are I mean, a lot of really good. That was so our, our Robotech Mac yeah. Yeah. homage for yeah. sure. <laughs> there, I, I, liked, I liked a lot of yeah. stuff. But I, as far as my, my just favorite <laughs> thing about this show, favorite... <sighs> It's just so, I know this is going to sound hollow to a lot of people who were upset by the way things shook out, but I love how inclusive this show was from the very, very beginning. Most of the team are people of color, which is so, so radically different from the way the show was presented yeah. uh, originally uh, in the in the 80s. It's been so inclusive, it, it, and there are just so many women in the world that aren't damsels in distress or just moms waiting for kids to get home. Even moms who are waiting for kids to come home oh, man. are amazing. Yes. Colleen Holt was like just everything. She was uh, amazing. Colleen was, was great. Colleen um, Holt is every, a holy terror. I think like that was some approximation of your mom, Lori. I... <laughs> she pretty much is. Yeah. Like, that was my great. mom didn't so I've told Joaquin this many times, but like I was not allowed to stay home from school unless I was literally throwing up. Like oh, if no. I had a cold, you were at school. If you were like, I don't feel good, you're at school. Like it doesn't matter. Opposite I had to me. be projectile <laughs> vomiting into a can if I was gonna stay home. And even then my mom would be like, You're fine. Like, <laughs> like if if I was like, It's not fair, life isn't fair. That was it. Like yeah. she would get out the violin and like oh cry me a river. Like this Did is she what have Violin. <laughs> she did not. Like it was fake. fake violin. It was but it's violin. like I learned real quick that whining doesn't doesn't get, get you me anything. anywhere. Yeah. That mm-hmm. like you know. I mean, and that being said, she was a great mother and great nurturer mm-hmm. and like super crafty. And I got all my creative juices from her. And like she's an amazing woman. Yeah. And uh, and she, you know, Colleen is is in some way yeah. very much representation of right. that. Lauren didn't even have to say that. It was like we could feel <laughs> it. Yeah, she was like, like, oh, this is Lauren's mom. Yeah. Um, but yeah. everyone right. from, oh. from Pigeon Allura to the Galra Generals to the oh, yeah. MFE pilots to Sonda, every woman in the show made me really happy just because it shows that women are people capable of doing any job men are doing mm. and it just, it meant a lot. Yeah, so, awesome. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep stepping on No, <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, I think I think for me, a lot of the stuff we touched on about the whole idea of um, succeeding but there being consequences because that is a more realistic approximation of how things go in real life. Um, not everything gets wrapped up perfectly with a bow. Right. Uh, and to me, that I would rather a satisfying ending than one that is in just like so conclusive that there's nothing else you can do because that that's just not realistic. That's never ever going to happen for you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, and then let's see. Uh, I think favorite um, episode. I did love the one with the nervous backstory. That was really good. I mm. loved um, the the game show episode. Oh, that, yeah. God bless you because the internet had so many was layers de- to quite it. Quite divided on that. <laughs> to me, that episode was really dark in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah I, I I really really loved that episode. Um, yeah, and oh oh, I know what I was gonna say. One of the other things that I really, really liked about it, and it goes along with the whole sort of succeeding with consequences, is the fact that there was that time skip where Voltron just was gone yeah. for two years, and 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 getting to see the fallout from that was very, um, it was very satisfying. Yeah. It's awesome. yeah. There's, we've had a lot of consensus, uh, consensus in chat. A lot of people are talking about Black Paladins being their favorite episode. Oh, so and my that's God, very that good. was a work of art. It was very good. Uh, people liked the game show episode. People awesome. like people liked all sorts of stuff. Um, Onerva's backstory. One person said, I liked any episode with a person in it, and I have to agree. <laughs> One person said, the pilot, lol, JK, but I know you were joking, but the pilot is the pilot also is, one of I'm my sorry, favorite episodes. The pilot is outstanding. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I don't even thinking. remember that episode. I don't even remember it. <laughs> so yeah. far back. They, they, I think they put two episodes they did. into yeah, the three, one. The three first episodes. Uh, the three first yeah. episodes were it one. It just seems like and literally the, a lifetime. And the three <laughs> of them playing all together in one chunk, it was 
like, oh my God, it was such a good pilot. It was just, here's what you're going to get. Let's go. And at yes. the end of that pilot, I was like, where wow. is all of it? Yeah. Please give it all Funny to me. Funny note about that episode, about that chunk. Uh, you know, we got a note pretty early on as we were like, just out of development, but still trying to figure out the tone of the show is mm -hmm. that the show needed more like comedy and stuff. So, like, the whole, like, sneaking around the garrison and hiding in trash cans, all that goofy stuff was originally not in. It was just, like, let's put some, like, silly gags where they're, like... <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, we literally sat in a room with the writers and just watched the Anna Mac and, and we're, like making up jokes that we could just stick yeah, in. Like, there was like, I don't even know if it's still in there. Was there like the giant cat lady with, with Lance like, watch out for a giant cat lady. No, that's gone. <laughs> like, giant cat lady is gone. Cat lady. <laughs> like, well, I love honestly, it. like 90% of them we ended up cutting later because we're like, this sounds like it came out of nowhere because it did. Yeah. Right. I sat in a room and we made up jokes. Right. Um, <laughs> but it did, but, uh, you know, to some extent it did help sort of sell the fact that we could go as broad as we did because yeah. it just kind of hit you with it right off the bat. Yeah. All right, well... We're we're close to the end. Mm -hmm. oh. I know I want to I want to say a couple things from our other hosts because yeah. uh, Mark oh, yeah. and Alexis could not be here tonight, but they both sent in messages. Oh. And so for Mark, thank you to my fellow lions and the fans for welcoming me as the Yellow Lion. I've been friends with everyone for a while, but working with everyone on this show deepened our relationship and brought us closer, similarly to the Paladins of Voltron. I may not have spent a lot of time as a part of the show, but I'll remember it fondly. Thanks again to all of the cast and crew for their hand in this magical show. Thanks to the fans for their acceptance and willingness to jump on the crazy theory train with me. <laughs> Thank you to Katie, Megan, Emma, and Alexis. Hashtag leg day! <laughs> Let's have dinner in front of a giant statue in a couple years, yeah? <laughs> wow. Can't say anything about the statue, but I don't want to wait a couple years. <laughs> You're local, dude. And from Alexis, just wanted to say how just wanted to say how sad that it's ending, but how thankful I am for this amazing show. I've met so many great people and so many feels from the amazing writing and acting this show has brought. Sending all my love to the amazing crew and actors we've met throughout throughout the seasons of the show. Found new friends and colleagues along the way, making new memories and unforgettable times with our viewers. To my amazing, beautiful ladies, I miss you and love you with all my heart. Thank you for having me be a part of this wonderful family. Mark, you will always be my right foot. <laughs> Hashtag leg day, you handsome devil, you. <laughs> they wrote these independently of each other. <laughs> So you know. That's awesome. Oh, I, like I didn't know if we needed the whip crack, but I love it. <laughs> so at that, I I want to give you guys a chance to do the same thing if you'd sure. like. If there's anything else you'd like to say to the fans, and you guys as well. So w would you like to start us off, or would you yeah. like a minute? Uh, I'm you know I just want to say obviously I feel like I've said it a million times, but yeah. just thank you to the fans for watching, for enjoying the show. Uh, we made it from the bottom of our hearts, trying to make a story that we found compelling that. You know, we ourselves responded to the emotional beats, and we wanted to just put that out there uh, and hope that other people felt for these characters the way we did. I wanted to share with you, Emma, real quick. Yes. On, as my Sailor Moon yes. compatriot. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I did try to pitch, like, oh, a yeah. Laura baby in the end. So, you know, at the end of the Sailor Saturn yeah. arc where she sacrificed herself, yes. and then Sailor Moon goes in and brings yes. out little Hattori. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I was like, I'm feeling All right, you on this. Blue Lion. <laughs> There's just a little imp in Allura. And then, like, oh you know, she, right, and she's then just she grows, And she, she gets, gets another, like, chance yeah. of living her life. And she doesn't <laughs> have to be sad that her dad got murdered. As a non-Sailor Moon person, like, Joaquin's like, that's a little weird. What, and then also, what was weird for me was, like, Lance her. raising this, like, <laughs> woman that he loved. <laughs> See, no, that's when it becomes orphan, and that's goes weird. From, right. No, 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 but, goes from, uh, but she could just romantic be romantic to to pl to unconditional and platonic. Yeah, she could, or it she could, or she I, could be raised by uh, Zathrin and Ezor. Oh, oh. See, that's a great idea. <laughs> I was thinking Koran. Oh, I, I was thinking no, like no, no, no. you know the <laughs> lesbian no, no, the baby. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping the Sailor Moon parallels, it has to be Zethrid and Azor. Right. <laughs> we we had to well, derail see, the, Veronica and Aksha. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We had to derail the show one sorry. last time for posterity. Sorry. No, thank you. No, 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 no. no. Thank but, you. but thank you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, you know, for always being super, like, uh, supportive yeah. and honest with your opinions about right. the show yeah. and just, you know, speaking to it from a, like, objective yeah. place. Uh, I, I will say that, like, we know sitting here and sort of, like, having a longer episode and talking about these subjects that uh, usually – you know, you, you tend to not shy away from, but kind of censor yourself a little bit to, to talking about uh, only because, you know, we, we don't want to, like, 
piss off anybody that, that we're working for. Yeah. We, we never approach uh, we never approach this uh, from a place of of fear or mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to be genuine f with where we're coming from and where we think the industry as a whole can yeah. go. The answers that we provide here probably aren't going to like satisfy the, the majority of the people out there. We do appreciate everybody's uh, opinion. We do appreciate the fans that have stuck with us uh, over the years on this. We know this show kind of came out of nowhere, <laughs> um, and people <laughs> didn't know what to make of it at first. And we appreciate that they that they sort of rallied around it, um, and and it it provided us so much joy and continues to. Um, that being said, we're happy that it's you know in the past this is probably like the last voltron thing that we're going to be doing yeah. ever so it's it's bittersweet for us and and we really thank you you guys and the fans for for uh, sticking with us mm -hmm. and uh, making it a fun experience outside of us being bleary eyed and <laughs> having no sun for long stretches of time making the show well, yeah. and you guys have come in to talk with us so often, and yeah. we really appreciate that because we know it it takes time out of your night. It's kind of a weird time slot, but we really do appreciate you coming in and sharing your thoughts and listening to us go off on crazy, crazy theories while you sit yeah. there and whistle. And you're just like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, we appreciate sure. you. Uh -huh. yeah. um, all right, Megan. Yeah, just thank you is all I can say. Thank you guys um, for not only supporting us, but for giving us a show that we could talk about. Thank you to our, our other uh, hosts that aren't here yeah. at, tonight. Um, mm -hmm. But like every everybody who's ever sat at this table Thank you to literally every guest we've ever had um, to share your insight and your time and everything like that. And everybody who's watched, even if, again, you don't necessarily <laughs> yeah. care for us or agree with us, thank you for watching because it means you care about Voltron. Yeah. And so do we. So at the very least, we have yeah. that in common. And just thank you to everybody who's done fan art yeah. and like animatics and like taking <laughs> stupid yeah. goofs that we've <laughs> said and like taken them and made art out of them. That to me is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys for making a show that we could talk about. And thank you, Katie, uh, for being like, hey, guys, <laughs> there's another giant robot show yeah. that we need to talk no. about. That's awesome. and <laughs> so thank you, Katie, for, for insisting that we talk about this in addition to all the other stuff that we were talking about and thank you yeah. to after buzz for for giving us studio time to uh, just allow us to gush yeah. about giant robots I think it was too a little bit of a you know this show came out of there being a of the audience asking for it honestly because we we started yeah. doing this show not immediately after the first season dropped on Netflix so it took a little while it did. and yeah. and basically it was like you know, I remember I had watched the pilot episode and I was like, oh, man, this is so great because, I, you know, I, I knew that you guys had worked on Legend of Korra. Right. And then, like, when you guys came in, I was like, Lord, I would keep knowing I am. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I, I you know, I, I love Avatar The Last Airbender, but, like, to me, like, Korra is my freaking show. Oh, like, wow. just because it's about... It's about a really realistic teenage girl. I know people get frustrated with her, but I'm like, I was that girl. But I think that's that that's sort of like the divide. And I, I don't want to cut you off. No, but like, no, no. Koro was literally created without any plan. Yeah. There, there was no like like big marketing thing around no. it. No. And so we were sort of like jamming this like square peg in a round hole yeah. when we were coming Voltron and it worked out as well as it did despite itself in sure, a weird way. Sure, totally. Um, and, and so, you know, watching the pilot episode, I was like, yes, I can feel the, the same team has oh, worked on this awesome. and I know that we're going to get an interesting story with very layered characters and ultimately that's what I enjoy in my fiction, end of story. Right um, and and to see the After Buzz audience saying like, hey, we know that you guys tend to like shows like this. We want to see an after show of this. And Mark um, Donica, who, you know, engineered the show and has been on the show, came to us and was like, hey, there's definitely an interest in this. And so Katie just kind of jumped on that and, and this awesome. all kind of came together. Um, and, you know, the fact that we've been able to talk with so many people who were involved in the show. It's just, it's it's been a, uh, it, it's been really uh, great. So. It's been a privilege. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> this, I think we started watching this show when we were in the middle of moving. <laughs> and I, I don't know, being... Katie and I are roommates. Yeah. Yes. Roommates, yes. Yes. Roommates for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
I had just moved, I think, because it yeah. came out in like June of 2016. <laughs> yeah. uh, yep. yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we, we started watching the show when we were in the middle of moving, and I remember coming back home from an Ikea trip and going, are you watching Voltron without me? <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> and watching it and saving the last few episodes because I was so sure that Shiro was going to die in the season finale. <laughs> and looking back now and going, oh, Katie. <laughs> And just the show itself has been an incredibly wild ride. So emotional, so much fun. Having to pause the episode and back it up because I was laughing so hard I missed dialogue. Having to get up and walk around after a season finale so I could process what I was seeing. It's, it's been an incredible show. And it has, it, it's so hard to find animation that addresses war and addresses that war has consequences mm -hmm. and does it in a way that kids and adults can gel with. It, that's rare for me. It's very rare. Voltron mm -hmm. hit that. And it's been incredible. And then doing this show with you guys, coming off of Robots in Disguise and doing, we're not done talking about <laughs> giant robots. Let's do this. Let's go. And everyone who has joined us in the chat, and everyone who has joined us on the couch and at the table, everyone who's ever been a guest on here who was nice enough to donate their time for our crazy little show <laughs> and had a wonderful, wonderful time talking with all of them. Everyone in the chat who, again, did fan art, did I'm still blown away yeah. that me saying I love everyone in this bar became the Tavern of Lions and someone <laughs> photoshopped us a menu. Like, <laughs> Awesome. You guys continually yeah, astound me. It has been such an incredible ride. It has been so much fun. It's been so great. And I am going to miss you all so, yeah. so much. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on that note, where can the people go on the social media? Uh, if they would are like we to doing keep this? Up with you? Uh, We're doing this. Right. This is how we close shows. All right. Art, Art of Lauren M on Twitter. Uh, the best Lauren Montgomery on Instagram. Uh, I apologize. I, I don't post much. Now but, that your, <laughs> but, but your collaboration yes, you post about with I do. Miyashiro? Is that with, that? Yeah, yeah, Tiffany Miyashiro. Yeah. Amazing woman. Amazing uh, designer. Fashion. And uh, and so yeah, I want the outfits of all those J-pop girls. <laughs> <laughs> they are great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, JDS underscore seventy seven, I think, on something, and JDS underscore twenty four seven. Twenty four seven on the other thing. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'll get to like sketching some like fan arty stuff soon. And honestly, just wanted to leave a little bit of a void in the in the wake of uh, uh, season eight and and just see my family yeah. and yeah. do things outside of like being involved sort of on a day to day with the show. Yeah. Um, so we'll get back to it. We'll have some fun um, and maybe post some pics of our new digs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks again, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for the show, for coming on this show, for everything. Thank you. Thank yes. you for putting it together. Yeah. Thank you for leading it, Katie. <laughs> Always fearless leader. And, uh, <laughs> Thank and you, also, everyone. thank you for, like, giving a format to the crew. Um, oh, yeah. Who oftentimes don't really, like, they don't mm -hmm. have a place to, like, talk about what they do and, and how important to the process they are. Like, each and every person on our crew, uh, they're amazing people, one, amazing artists, um, and really lent to the DNA of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell from episode to episode who directed what, who wrote what, because it had their Their, their, their flair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their flair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, well, so awesome. Thanks again, you guys. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Megan, uh, where again, can the people find you? <laughs> again, thank you, everybody. And thank you to everybody who reached out to me uh, this week on Twitter. You guys are all incredibly sweet and incredibly kind. Thank you all so, so much. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. -E I also do a Lost retrospective podcast called No Love Lost, where my co-host loves Lost, and I don't. <laughs> so be sure to check that out. That's amazing. Uh, I'm Emma Fife. I can be found all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold. At my name, Emma Fife. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. I tweet about it, though, so just, you know, follow me on Twitter and you'll know everything that I'm doing. Oh, uh, number one, uh, next Tuesday is my birthday, uh, yeah. Yeah. but also uh, uh, volume <laughs> three of He Left a Dead, which is the Call of Cthulhu uh, anthology series that we've been doing over on the Twitch channel, Hyper RPG, starts that night, so that'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. You don't have to watch the other volumes to know what's going on, so check that out on twitch.tv slash Hyper RPG. 
You can follow Yellow Lion Mark Donica at Mark Me Donica. You can follow Blue Lion Alexis Torres at A Torres 890. I'm Katie Cullen. You can follow me all over the social medias as well as on YouTube and Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K I A X E T. I am also on an Overwatch podcast called On the Point, and I am on an All Things Rooster Teeth podcast along with Megan and a host of other wonderful people called the called Rooster Team Radio. So anchor.fm slash the Rooster Team if you still want to hear us talk about things, including giant robots, because Genlock is a thing. Genlock is yeah. amazing. Genlock guys. is such a thing. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah. Thank you again for coming on. Thank you guys for doing this entire ridiculous show with me. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. See you later, Paladudes. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 